And welcome morning, to sir. Yes, good morning. I hope you're all doing well. Yes, sir. Okay. I know it's been a probably a very busy week, but I believe you've had time to look through your materials. Um so I hope you can hear me very well. It, is it is it loud enough? Um yes, sir. Okay, okay. So uh, I'm going to go through some of the things that we actually did last uh, last week. And I would more or less repeat some of the things that we did or uh, I presented in the video um, I sent over the week. Or let's say last week, we are in a new week starting from today. So I can talk about last week. So I will quickly run you through um, the general paper session, which we. Hello. Okay. okay. iPhone. Okay. Great. Okay, okay, these are challenges associated with um, online streaming and so on. Okay, so let me quickly recap what I presented in the video and I, I, I gave you some exercises or some tasks and I would just want to get some feedback from you. Um, so first of all, let me find out from you if you have any questions, any thoughts regarding the last video I put on the LMS. And then I will quickly run us through what I have for today. Then we will do some, we'll take the trial question that I sent, I think a week before, then we'll resolve them. Then we'll set ourselves the agenda for this new week, the video you should expect on Tuesday and some tasks that you should perform before we meet again next week, probably face to face. Okay, so is there any feedback you know, from, for, for me? Apple. Yes. Doreen Juliet, okay. is it Juliet? Did you just mention my name? Somebody called oh, my name my right now. <laughs> okay, so is the, if there's any feedback, kindly raise up your hand or kindly come in and let's go. Juliet, do you have something for me? Is there any feedback? Okay. So in the absence of feedback, let's run through um, our, our tasks for today. So I think this is supposed to be week two. We've done week one already, but um, I'm still going to take you through week one activity uh, on the general knowledge and i'll take you through the steam and i'm taking you through because it's a lot for, of all the the different sessions i've found or i've put together steam happens to be the largest and that is why your last video was very huge um i'm hoping that in the coming weeks you have very short videos that will set some kind of introduction for you then you'll go ahead and continue so um I've already established the objectives in the video, so let's move quickly to the things that I require you to do. Um, I ask you to prepare a short list of the different disciplines and careers that you find in science. So for instance, when you look on the left side of this, um, what you see on your screen, you will see a list of um, disciplines or careers that you find in the area of um, science. As I indicated in the video, nobody would, is going to ask you to give very detailed definitions of who uh, a pharmacist, for instance, is or who um, a botanist is or who an archaeologist is. is. But you, you need to know 
um, have a, just a rough sense of who these people or these individuals or these professionals are. So begin a small list, just have a small booklet or a small a small list and just be listing all the items that you come across in terms of the disciplines and the careers. So as I indicated, you can have three columns. You can have the first one that has to do with, let's say, the discipline. The second one has to do with the profession associated with it. So let's say the discipline is oceanography. The, the career is oceanographer. Then what do you say about it? Somebody who's, whose work entails working in the ocean or working in the sea, the, the, the things that we find in the sea and so on. So you prepare that list, then you can just list item one, this item two, item three. So begin to build your own list gradually. Then when we come to class, we can share ideas on the list each of us has. Then we can put them together into maybe a master list. Okay. As I have already mentioned, nobody is going to ask you to define these things, but you could be given a question where you are supposed to identify, let's say, the odd item out. So I can bring you careers that are associated with the sciences and bring one career from, let's say, business. So I can give you, let's say, uh, an entomologist, a botanist, a zoologist, and add an accountant. So what you need to do is to separate um, the odd item from the rest of the list. You know, So it's just to have a fair idea of the different disciplines when it comes to science. And as I said, we're not going to look deep, deep, deep into the disciplines. Some of the things can easily be captured. For instance, when you see the word zoologist, even if you've not met it before, try breaking it down into zoo and logic. Zoo, when we go to the zoo, what do we see? Animals. And so technically, when we talk about zoologist, we're talking about somebody's, somebody whose work entails working with animals or who, whose work entails uh, studying animals. And that's how we learn. That's how we test your adaptive skills. That is how we test your readiness for university education. You don't need to know everything, but you need to be able to find tools, strategies, devices, ways by which you can easily access knowledge, ways by which you can easily know things. You know, and that is the hallmark of um, the scholar or a learner should be able to, should be tactical, should be able to have various tools. You cannot throw your hands in despair. You should be a problem solver. And in solving problems, you need to find, identify tools, things that you need, and so on. So you will not have all the answers immediately, but you should be able to break things down and find ways of solving or identifying the problems and so on. Um, I've already mentioned in the last video about common science phenomenon. So it means that you need to know a few things about science. So when we talk about the earth rotate, rotating, what does it mean? It is the movement of the earth on its axis, it's the turning, the spinning of the earth on its axis. And that is able to give us day and night. And so you need to be familiar with this common phenomena in, uh, phenomenon in, in, in science. And when we talk about the revolution of the earth, so it's different when we talk about rotation and revolution. Rotating is when the earth stands on its own axis and spin itself. And the revolution is when the earth goes around the sun. And that gives us the year. So rotation gives us the day and night and the revolution gives us the year. And these are basic phenomena in science that we need to know. You also need to know how rains are formed cloud formation, how clouds are formed, and so on. These are basic things that you need to know. Um, there are issues of climate change. It's very common these days for people to hear things about climate change, how our weather patterns are gradually changing as a result of global warming, as a result of excess carbon infusion into the atmosphere, as a result of our own human activities, making the earth warming up so much and that is also changing the patterns that we know about the earth in terms of rain formation, in terms of 
um, various phenomena, hurricanes and all that, all these are being affected by how human activities are gradually warming up the planet or the Earth's atmos atmosphere. And these have become issues of concern to many scientists and to many, uh, many individuals. You and I should be concerned. The recent flooding in um, uh, the southern belt of the Akosombo Dam or just after the dam where we have the spillage it's all part of the climate change issues. In the past, this will not happen at this time. But now we've had to spill the dam. Of course, there are human factors within this situation. But it's all because, because of climate change. Things are changing and we need to be very quick and fast, understanding how things are changing and how these things are affecting our, 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 our environment. And when we are not able to quickly adapt or when there are a few um, adjustment issues in terms of um, we understanding or appreciating so well the situation, we are likely to find ourselves in this situation. And so for anybody who calls himself a university scholar or somebody calls himself a scholar, a knowledgeable person, you should have some fair idea, some small idea about what is going on in our environment why we are having this these changes in weather patterns and as i said it's a result of a lot of carbon emission into the earth's atmosphere and so on then when we talk about matter the different states of matter gas liquid solid and so on these are basic things that we need to know and so if i give you an item i expect you to be to be able to say this is gas this is liquid this is wood uh, solid. So, and as I said, in a typical examination situation, we'll just give you a list of items and yours is to just identify these items clearly. I've also mentioned about, uh, uh, mentioned tools. So tools, devices, instruments, and so on. I've just listed two. So draw a small list and begin to all the tools that we have, you can imagine, or are common in science. Just list them and what they are used for. So when I meet you face to face, I'll inspect your tools uh, or your list of tools as much as I inspect um, the disciplines, your list of disciplines and careers and so on. I've already talked about um, the fact that we also have to do a bit of the human body, the human uh, biology. So it's more about understanding uh, the different parts of the human being. Um, as a, as, as a student, you should be able to uh, identify the different parts of the human body. The basic one, ones being what we just see with our naked eyes. Um, and the other ones being the ones that are hidden from our naked eyes. The ones that we probably have to split um, the body open for us to be able to see some of the organs, the internal organs and so on. So we need to understand a few things about them, what they do, and so on. And that is what I expect you to also study. So draw a small list. Now you have the organs, you have the brain, the heart, the liver, the lungs, and so on, the stomach, and so on, the reproductive system, the womb, the uterus, and all those things. Just have a list of some of them. As I said, I will not tell you to tell me, define what the stomach is, for instance. But if I say the part of the body where the human you know, food is digested. And so on, then I expect you to, when I give you the list, I expect you to find that part of the body where our food enters for digestion and so on. Then I've mentioned conditions like diseases that are associated when you mention certain diseases, what easily comes into your mind, the which part of the body is usually affected or is 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 it's involved, then you need to be able to mention that. Then we talked about animals and their classes, their classification and species. You have mammals, you have bears, you have reptiles, amphibians, and vertebrates. At least we need to have examples of each of them we should be able to tell that, okay, of course, a, um, a crow is a bird. We should be able to tell that maybe the elephant, the dog, and so on, they all fall under mammals, so on. Then I also mentioned animal features, the various parts of animals as well. 
and we know human features, but so we should be able to identify features that animals have. For instance, fish has scales. We need to be able to mention that as an example. They have fins. We should be able to mention that as well. Then we have animal characteristics, things that animals do, and specific names we give to the things that animals do. We should be able to mention that. Then when we talk about plants, we can talk about um, the different parts of plants and what they do, you know. So the leaves, the flowers, the stem, the roots, and so on. And of course, the nutrients that we find from plants, plant nutrients. Of course, there are some nutrients we also get from animal animals. So we should be able to have a rough idea. So you can draw a small list where your vitamins, vitamin sources, carbohydrate, carb carbohydrate sources, uh, protein, protein sources, minerals, mineral sources, and so on. And these are things you can easily capture from online. If you just go online and type uh, food nutrients, you get a whole picture. It can be in a picture form, it can be in a list. You can just copy and paste in your own notes and be familiar with it. These are um, areas that the examiner might want to find out what you know about. Um, of course, we talked about space science, so it's more about um, our planet and its relationship with some other um, solar bodies or some other bodies within the within the universe. So um, when we usually look up into the universe, we see a large expanse and uh, we, we we wonder what is out there up there, you know, but science has been able to explore and is able to tell us scientifically with some evidence what is up there. Of course, not everything up there is known to us, but we are able to understand a few things that are closer to us. We are able to also scientifically you know, make calculations about things that are likely to be in the universe or up up there. We are able to use some scientific tools like the telescope to identify objects that are within the outer space and be able to make some calculations and so on. A lot more is being found almost every day. New discoveries or discoveries come up. We hear stories about uh, new things that have been found and all these must be issues of concern to us as learners we may not be a uh, space scientist per se we may not be we may not be astrophysicists and so on but at least we should know that we have planets out there we have we used to have nine planets there was some, some reorganization one has been removed pluto has been if you like downgraded from a planet to uh, a pseudo planet or um, it's no more captured as a, a planet. So um, that brings us to eight. So now we can look at the different planets we have, just identify them, those that are closer to us, those that are very far from us. So the relationship between our planet and other planets, the characteristic, we don't need to know all these things, but at least you need to be able to mention that there is Mercury, there's Venus, there is Earth, there is Mars, there's Jupiter, there's um, Saturn and all that. We need to have a list of all these planets. As I said, when you just quickly go online and type the planets, you would have a list of all the planets and you will have explanations why, um, why Pluto, for instance, is no more considered a planet. It's a decision based on some scientific arrangement or scientific uh, parameters. And so all these are things that we need to be just familiar with. So that when you hear, oh, there is an Earth mission to Mars, you are not lost. At least you know that Mars is one of the planets. So if there's an Earth mission to Mars, then it means that mankind is making efforts or has made efforts to study another planet like ours. We may not have all the features as ours, but it also exists as a planet um, and it's closer to us, you know. So within our solar system, where we have our sun as the middle of all activities, we have the nine or eight planets, if you like. Then 
it is not just our solar system that exists in the universe. There are other systems like our solar system. So there are other, if you like, stars. The, the sun is considered as a star. And so there are other stars like our star or like our sun. And so people, and it has all its own planets and so on. There are also studies about some planets that don't actually align themselves to any particular star and so on. And within our, our, our solar system, we have the planets. The planets also have satellites. And for, for, for Earth, our satellite is the moon. So there are other, the other planets also have <clears throat> their moons, if you like. We just call them satellite. And so we have our sun plus its planets and the planets plus its um, satellites forming our solar, <clears throat> forming our solar system. And there are such systems all over within the universe. Just, just a minute. <clears throat> So just a bit of understanding in these areas. You don't need to know all the technical details and the calculations and everything. No, we are not space scientists. It's just to test your general knowledge as a student or as a learner, what you basically know. Then, of course, we can turn our minds to uh, telecommunications, where we look at uh, how technology has been able to or has advanced our way of communicating as human beings. So we have social media. Of course, we used to have traditional media. It's all part of the technological revolution where we started off with usually the face-to-face -face conversation that we have. Then gradually we transitioned into some kind of uh, communicating across distances using telegram, telegraphs, and so on, using... Um, um, telephones, the communion of telephones. Now we've gone very far to the extent that I can even communicate with you right um, in your homes and you can see my face and I can also see you if you want to want me to see you. And it looks like face to face. It's all part of the revolution that has taken place in our communication, uh, in our communications. And so you should also be familiar with the revolution that is taking place, some of the terms, some of the phenomena that are associated with this telecommunication revolution that we are all part of. Nobody has, nobody is left out. We are part of it, whether you like it or not. We are part of this revolution. And so when you hear the word browsing, it's, it brings in some ideas. It tells you how to you know, navigate your way through the internet search engines, the various search engines that we have, the commonest ones you should know, the commonest search engines, you know, such as the Google, Google Chrome, so on. Then at least through this, this technology, we are able to use terms such as emailing, texting, calling, deleting, and so on. These are all um, activities or processes that have become part of the telecommunication revolution. We can also talk about cyber. When you hear the word cyber, more or less related to the technological space. So when we talk about cyber security, it's all about the telecommunication space. Then usually we hear the word virus. Okay. In science, in, 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 in uh, human science, we know virus. But in telecommunication, we also have another meaning for virus. And we need to just be familiar with it. Nobody will ask you to define a virus, but if it's when you say there's a virus, we need to know what it means. Then, if you say something is viral, something that goes viral, all these are terms that are becoming so some kind of words and meanings, busy, busy words and meanings within the technological space. Of course, projectors and so on. Um, then mathematics. Um, as I've always mentioned. We are doing mathematics already, so I wouldn't want to take so much time talking mathematics. But what I would do is to test what you are learning in the uh, mathematics class. At least you should be familiar with odd numbers, even numbers. You should be able to build series. 
should be able to appreciate polygons and shapes, solve basic mathematical problems, riddles, profit, simple profit and loss, simple calculations on percentages. All these are things that you need to be slightly, you need to be familiar with so you can navigate your way through the academic space. I've also mentioned about the arts, so painting, colors, and so on. All these are basic things that you should know. Identify what a sculpture is, what an art piece is, graphic designs. So basic pieces of art, if, uh, if they are shown to you, you should be able to tell that this is a painting, this is a sculptural work, or this is sculpture, this is, um, you know, a mosaic and so on. All these are basic things that you need to. So you can build some vocabulary out there. Instruments, um, musical genres. So when we talk about music, what are the different classifications of music? You have jazz, classical, reggae. So let's add more to the list. I've given three. Add more. Let's move on. A few um, popular artists, both local and international artists. You can look at it from the Ghanaian common or popular Ghanaian artists, look at popular African artists, look at global icons when it comes to the music, the arts, the arts in terms of film, television, music, and so on. Just have a list of all these individuals. Then um, we can also talk about literature and media arts or literary and media arts. So on. So when we talk about a few books, so for instance, um, what are some of the common books that you have been reading? Some of the popular um, writers, a few Ghanaian writers, like um, um, Amujoleto of Blessed Memory. Um, some of them are alive. Uh, Kofi Awuno is not more with us. Um, Kofi Anyiduho is alive. Um, a yeah, number of them, number of um, writers, you know, uh, Amate who just left us. Um, so just a few names. Nobody's going to ask you who they are, where they were born and their personalities and so on. But I can give you a list of Ghanaian art uh, writers and put in one Western writer. Okay, Probably the easiest thing would be you being able to identify a Ghanaian name from maybe a Western name or so, you know, maybe Achebe or... Um, uh, yeah, Chino Achebe or um, Cyprian Equency, but you don't need all these names, you know, but just be familiar, at least you know a few Ghanaian writers, especially those who have become popular in, in the Ghanaian writing space, and a few media personalities that we, we know, both past and present, so especially within the broader uh, telecommunication space or within the television space. Um. Then, of course, um, we can talk about engineering breakthroughs, such as um, computers, laptops, robots, vehicles, levers, and so on. Just write it, just compile a small list of some of these things, the, some of the technologies that we have today that assists us to, uh, to work or that makes our life easy, including television, including the internet, and so on. So, so this is basically general knowledge on the science or science-related general knowledge. And we put it together as STEAM. Initially, as you already know, we call it STEM, but we just put in the arts because for, for us, for some of us, um, you cannot really take away the art out of science. Some of the many discoveries that we've had in in science have been predictions that have been made by artists. There have been some of the uh, some of the things that artists have done that have probably compelled scientists to make moves. If you remember those days, James Bond movies, where they you could have flying cars, where you could have cars that walk on water bodies and so on. Thankfully, today we have been able to produce some of these things like cars that, you know, alternate between water bodies and land. And this could be attributed to how um, actors and script writers, people within the movie industry were 
you know, thinking about life and producing movies and stuff on, 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 on things that could happen in the future. Remember, some of us watched Robocop long ago when we were very young. And thankfully, today we have robots becoming a commonplace, you know. So sometimes art has a way of predicting or making uh, conjectures into the future or even inviting people to think and solve future problems. And we, we, we call some of these artistic, you know, uh, structures, futuristic art or art that is able to predict into the future. When you can watch, you, when you watch a number of uh, futuristic movies, they they try to even tell us what will happen in 2050, what will happen in 2090, uh, what will happen in the next, you know, um, few centuries to come, how human life is going to be radically transformed. There are movies that show us all these. And sometimes in a way, they, they get it right. Sometimes they are able to, I don't know whether they compel scientists to move in that direction or they are just being prophets, just telling us what will happen and they definitely come into being. So some of us think that art is a very strong component of the sciences, especially when we talk about paintings, colors and all those things. You can see that there's no way you can really see colors and the man manipulation of colors as something that is not really connected with art. There is a very strong connection between manipulation of colors and so on in sciences. In fact, producing colors and also, this is a scientific activity. So it, it, it's very important for some of us to connect the arts and the science. And that's why we want to put all together as STEAM, where we have science, where we have the proper physical science, then we have the uh, technology coming in, which is more of applied. Then you have um, the engineering that's also applied in a way. Then you have the arts coming in. Then you have a bit of mathematics. They all come in together to constitute one broad area of knowledge that we all know. I mentioned last week in our class that technically um, there is no border lines between one discipline or the other. It is just for convenience of study, convenience of arrangement, how we can specialize. That is why we've really put lines between science, between science, you have physics, chemistry, biology, but if you look at it very critically, they they, they just woven together. There's a bit of science, a bit of chemistry in biology, a bit of biology in chemistry, a bit of physics in chemistry and so on. So it's just for our own convenience within the academic space or in the production of knowledge to say, okay, this area is this and that area is also that and so on, that kind of this, uh, connection. Okay, so this is just a wrap of what we, um, I presented in the last video. And so I would, I would end it here. I'm going to go back to the first trial question that I put out there and I asked you to try your hand on it and I've been provided the answers. So we'll go back to the trial um, question, uh, trial questions, then we're going to go through all of them. And when we finish, we'll take questions. Maybe if you have questions, maybe we can take one or two questions for now. If any, if there are no questions, we'll quickly go through the questions and set ourselves a new task for this week. Thank you. So I'm going to stop sharing and bring up a new, so I'm going to bring up the question. Okay, so I'm going to share this with you right now. Okay. 
So this is our first trial question. I hope you can see it. Okay. So you yeah, have seen Bernard. Bernard, or do tell your hand is up. You can speak up right now. Yes, sir, please. Um uh Pamela, there is a lady on the platform called uh Pamela. Mm -hmm. Pamela, please um unmute your mic, okay? And then Kwame Ada don't spin out. Please unmute your I mean uh, video. Sure. Do you mean Thank they you. should mute or they should unmute? They should mute them. They should mute, okay. mute them. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So that's Bernard, right? Yes, please, sir. Okay, okay. So your hand was up with respect to this, right? Yeah, I, I was inspecting it because I was getting an hitchings on my side. Okay. okay. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, so can we move on? So um, rejoice. Is your hand up? Rejoice, a name, a fear. Is your hand up? I can see your hand no, up. No, so just... No, please. My hand is not. Oh, okay. Thank you. And then, then lower your hand because I, I've seen a hand associated with your hand, uh, with your name. So maybe you can click on it. Uh, you can. Yes. Yeah, so I'm still getting the feedback that rejoice, a name, a fear raised hand so kindly put it down or uh, lower it if it could be a mistake so just lower it okay so um let's go through the questions here um there are 50 questions sample test one you have to answer all questions and the task is for you to choose the correct response from the options provided in each test item so the first item is dash not sure you understand my pain empathy is all i ask for please and the correct answer is a which is i apostrophe m i'm not sure now when you look at i'm just going to highlight um this one the second item you see um so i'm um, a and B in terms of pronunciation are homophonic or they are homophones, okay? So we say am the same as we say am, as in A and B, okay? So when it comes to speech, am is the same as am. There's no distinction. That's why we say they are homophonic or they are homophones, okay? But when it comes to writing, we draw a distinction. So this should also remind us that there is a difference between what we speak and what we write. There's a difference between what we say and what we see. And so in language, you need to be familiar with what we say and what we see in terms of read and write. And so um, sometimes when we are even doing our texting, especially on, on social media, WhatsApp and so on, we use the am, um, that's the B, because we just want to be fast with it. We just want to be quick. So we, we just type all those things. It's for social media and it's understood. But when it comes to formal writing and for you to write something that is grammatical, the best option is the A and not the B. So I just want to see you to appreciate that distinction. Then, then when you go up there to... Question two, it's mathematics. It says, find the mean or average of the following numbers. Okay, so we have minus five, 12, 24, 46, and 60. So you have one, two, three, four, five numbers. Now, what you do in trying to calculate the mean or get arrive at the average is for you to put all these numbers together and divide by the number of items you have, which in this case is five. So you're going to add 60 or you can start from five, negative five. So you are going to add negative five to um, 12. So that technically means you are going to 
deduct five from 12, then you add it to 24, then you continue adding to 46, then you add to 60. Then whatever total you get, you, you would divide it by five, and that gives you um, 27.4. Has anybody tried it? Has anybody you can use yes, your calculator sir. right now yes sir yes sir yeah did you get twin uh, did you get a did yes get i got a, a. i've shaded okay. my every two steps okay that's fine that's good any other yes any any yes okay. a. it's a okay so there is no disagreement or there's no dispute okay so let, let's move to item um let's move to item three so you are to select the odd option. You are to select the odd option. I think I shouldn't have given the answers here. Maybe I could. But of course, this is something I've given you already, and I expect that by now you have the answers. So the future ones will be different. Bernard, is your hand up? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, the answer is a smell pumpkin. Okay. Why do you think so? Do you have a reason for your option? Yeah, because uh, pumpkin is something like, let's say, um, going to the fruits or the vegetable side. You know, mm -hmm. pump, 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 pumpkin is associated to those kind of stuffs, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. But sea blue is a color. Mm -hmm. And then when you go into the here, Mm -hmm. is the jungle when it goes into the music and act side mm -hmm. you have that one too there okay and then the feel that one comes into the, our our body the sensation we will feel within okay. our body okay yeah so the the feel come come across that maybe someone have the lumps in 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 the body mm -hmm causing some mm -hmm. form of a uh, tumor in the body. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thank sure. you. That's a very good attempt. Um Eric, do you have any any disputes? Quaffle. Sorry, sorry, I had I, I had muted my mic. So, okay, go uh, ahead. My I also want to add my understanding and maybe top up to what my brother was saying and then we get the clarification okay. on it. So okay, I, was, I want fine. to start from D. Mm -hmm. the, reason, the reason why we are choosing A as the odd item is when you talk about a lamp, it is something that you can feel. So when you are examining, examining let's say, the breast and there's a lamp inside, you are able mm. to feel it. Mm. So feel and lamp, they are connected together. Okay. And jingles are sounds. Okay. So when a jingle is played, you can hear it with your ears. Okay. So hear and jingle, they go together. That's fine. Now, blue, blue is a color. And when okay. there is a color, you see it with your eyes. So mm -hmm. see the blue color. So they are connected together. But okay. when it comes to pumpkin, it's, it belongs to the food item. So mm -hmm. what you do to food or vegetables or fruits is you eat them. You don't smell okay. them. So okay. that's why I believe A is the odd item. So what do you think you should have gone to pumpkin to probably make it easy and uh, make it a correct response? What would, could we have done to pup, pumpkin? So pumpkin should have taken eat. Eat or taste. Or taste, yes. Mm -hmm. Then that, that, that would have mean, uh, maybe that would, yes. yes. So just, exactly, just, just exactly, just exactly, exactly, bro. Exactly, exactly. Okay, exactly. okay. Okay, uh, so Eric, you've done well. You've done so well. So, so this Thank is you. how the questions sometimes appear. Nobody's going to ask you to define and explain things, but at the end of the day, you should be able to do, it's more about, about association. This is a kind of question uh, um, that tests your ability to associate concepts. So you can see on the right, you have senses and on the, on the sorry, on, the, on your left, you see the senses and on the right, you see um, items. So what items are connected with what senses or what senses would you use to associate with certain objects or concepts and so on? So that's a very good um, explanation given by Eric. Is there any further dispute? Yeah, come in. Uh, is it Yvette? 
Yes, please. Um, good morning, yes. everyone. So, uh, in as much as we are choosing a as our answer, the first guy mm -hmm. mentioned that we have a color C blue. If mm -hmm. he is choosing, if he is taking it from the color perspective, mm -hmm. I want to ask: Is the spelling of the C correct or wrong? Is it supposed to be C as an S, F A E or S E A, or is this kind of C? Because this C is more or less like looking at something. But if yes. he is referring to the color then it should be spelled according to the sea, as in the water sea. So that's okay. why I'm a little bit confused. Okay, so you. as I said, thank you, Yvette, for your question. So as I said, if you, um, okay, um, Ked Shiloh or Shiloh, do you want to respond? Or is yes, that first thing? Okay. I want to, um, I think I would like to take the answer from the, uh, Bernard and Eric. Okay, so um, in, in order to answer our sister, I just spoke. So if um, we are seeing or we are considering what Eric said, he said that when it comes to the color we see, so you can associate the two of them that see and then the color blue. So when you see the blue, you know that there's a side that is blue. So I think um, if we are taking it in that way, then we can answer it that it's correct. But um, with the sea, as in SEA, which is uh, mm. associated with water, um, mm. that will bring a lot of complexion. Yes. So yeah. you take, you best consider the sea and then a color. That is what I would like to um, say about that. And then the something to, um, I think, though um, Eric is suggesting it should have been. Pumpkin and eat or eat pumpkin. I think um, the smell too is correct because uh, though it's a vegetable or fruit, we can also still have the smell. Every entity or everything, um, every vegetable, every fruit has its own smell. The way watermelon smells is different from how orange smells, how pear, uh, pear smells, and any other thing. So I think if it was eat, that would have been fine as well. But if it smells still, it is still great, I think. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. So let's resolve this quickly and move on. We can't, so um, just as uh, the gentleman said, any, is there anybody? So Sharon and Anita. Yes, hi. Yes, okay. hi, this is Sharon. Okay. I just wanted to add um, a contribution. I think the question is basically has to do with the five senses. So to see, to taste, to feel, I just want, I think that and will to make hear. it a little clearer. Yes, to hear. That will make it a little clearer for all of us. So when sure. it comes to the pumpkin, the smell is not correct because that's supposed to be the, the sense to taste. And then see is the the sense to like vision to see so that goes to the blue mm. then the jingle yeah. has to do with the the sense of hearing and then the feel has to do with the sense i don't know so i think it's basically yeah. talking about the five senses of Absolutely. the body that makes it more clearer for all of yeah. us yeah so you're right we're talking about the senses so you can see that the senses are on your left and maybe items that we can easily use our senses to capture will be on your, sorry, the, 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 the senses are on your left and the items that you can easily use your senses to capture are on, on your right. And so we normally feel a lump in our, our body, any part of the body. So we can feel it by using our hands to touch parts of our body. The truth that sometimes you can even see the lump, you know, but so... In, in options like this, we're looking at the most pronounced or the most profound, okay? So we can even see lamps. You can see a lamp on your finger, uh, on your on your forearm or the back of your hand. If there is a swelling or a lamp, sometimes you can see it. Um, it can be, if it's pronounced, if it is obvious, you can and see. But the obvious or the normal thing that we normally do with lamps, we feel them with our hands. So your hand is moving around various parts of your body, like somebody mentioned the breast, and you can easily feel the lamp. Uh, when a jingle is being played, you can easily hear it. And when a color appears, you can see. There's no way you can really perceive a color without seeing, you know. 
And I also agree with um, one of us who said that the pumpkin may have a smell. It's true, it may have a distinct smell, but then it means that you have to bring the pumpkin so close to be able to, you know, identify the smell or observe the, the smell. But ideally, we can easily see a pumpkin and identify it when we see it with our naked eyes. So I would even want to see, use the word see for pumpkin, because when you see it, you can see that this is pumpkin. Or if not, then let's taste it and see if it is, uh, uh, if I have a bite of it or a small portion of it in my mouth, I can, even with my eyes closed, I should sure, 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 sure. taste like a pumpkin. Okay, so, uh, some of the questions are not really so perfect. I will point out some of them to you, but you know, it is like a problem. You should be able to solve it from the easiest possible angle. Um, as we move along, there are some questions you will see. It's difficult to show the answer because almost every answer is right or every, almost every option is also right. But you may have to look for the commonest, the easiest identifiable um, um option rather than go deep so because if this one if you want to examine it very critically you may want to fault the question itself and say well the pumpkin i'm familiar with has a, has a, a distinct smell so for that reason i want to dispute the, the answer and so on so let's move on to the fourth item we just want to run a bit quick so that we don't run late um so this is more of a language problem, right? So it says, before unveiling the new city public relations campaign, the mayor showed the mayor showed it to us, to we, or us business leaders, whom who whom helped finance the effort. Okay. And the best answer as provided there is us and who. Is there any reason why we should choose who, us and who, and not we and who? Is there any, any reason? Can anybody help us? Okay, so when you look at the first part, which is um, the mayor showed it to, okay, because of the word to or the preposition to the next item that comes should be an objective form or should be in the form of object not the subject remember that we is a subject and its object form is us okay if we put this into a sentence i will say we are meeting today we being the subject okay if i want to put the same we into an object form I can say he gave it to us, he gave it to us, or he taught us, just in a very simple sentence, he taught us, where us is an object. But the same us can also appear as we taught him, we taught him, where we is now the subject. So for pronouns we have pronouns that we use as subjects and pronouns that we use as objects and so on and so when you have a pronoun appearing as an object you have to choose the right pronoun for it and when it appears as a subject you use the right form for it and in this case we and us are the same we and us are the same pronouns except that we is for subject and us as for object in this construction even because of the preposition to okay this to will invite an objective form usually anytime you have um a preposition like to in of for you will choose the object form or the objective form which is us if it is he you will choose him if it is she, you choose her. As for it, it's the same, you know. So the the best answer for the first first set or the first part of the construction is us. 
Then when you go to the second construction, it is who. Who helped? The who is the subject and the whom is the object. So we use who for subject and we use whom for object. And I believe this may come up in your English class. If not, we can still spend some time on it in our face-to-face -face interaction. Ben, has this, ben, has this your hand up? Okay. Yes, sir, please. Oh, I wanted old to... hand. Okay, go ahead. I wanted to ask a question, but you have elaborated on it so I've understood what you are telling about. That's good. Thank you so much, Ben. Thanks so much. Let's go, to, let's go to item five. Okay. So let's read it. If you are dash certain, you can remain dash for an hour. I can get the work done. So we need to use the item quite, quit, quit, quiet, 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 quiet. Quiet, <laughs> and these are confusing words sometimes, especially when we are spelling them. We you may you may easily gloss over them, but when we are talking, we we, we know what we are saying, so it, it's easier for us to manipulate. It's easy when I'm talking and I can say quiet, I can say quiet, I can say quit, without messing them up. But when it comes to writing, sometimes the spelling. And the ease with which you can mess this up is something that we need to pay attention to. So the best response is if you are quite certain, quite certain, you can remain quiet. So quite quiet, quite certain, you can remain quiet for an hour. I can get the work done. So the best option is D. Now let's look at item six. Sorry, item six. I think it's a bit broken. So we have to identify um, the odd option. Okay, remember, I asked you to look at the regions that we have and so on. So this is a pure test of our understanding of the regions. So um, what we know about the region. So we have Dambai, we have Naraligu, uh, we have Rikum, we have Gosu. And check the spelling of Rikum. I think it should be B-E-R-E-K-U-M. This is the odd one out. Okay. Um, can anybody tell us the regions of these? Um, so let's start with Dambai. Dambai belongs to which um, region? The OT region. region. Beautiful. The Nalarigu is for which region? Northeast. Northeast. Okay. Thank you. So you do you have the list, I I guess. And of course, Brekum doesn't belong anywhere. Brekum have... is Brekum is a uh, bro. No. Yes, Brekum but it's not a regional bro. capital. Yes. It's not a regional capital. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Then we have Gosu. That's our four region. Gosu. Okay. So Gosu is a half. Yeah. Uh, um, Bernard, before you come in, I have Joseph. All right. Yeah. Joseph, are you there? Oh. Joseph, your hand is up. Oh, sorry. I wanted to mention okay. the yeah. That's fine. That's fine. So um Bernard, you can come in now. Yes, Bernard, please, come in. please, sir. I think the answer is Nel Nel Regu. Where is the B? Why are you saying so? Because when you go to the Dagomba side, which is the northern part side, we have that side for the Dambai people. Or oh. mm -hmm. Dambai is not in the northern region. Dambai is Tutsi region. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. My sister, I beg you, relax, relax. <laughs> okay, so the, the capital of North Northeast region is uh -huh. Nalerigu. Nal Nal sure. Mm -hmm. I wanted East to explain region. something, but she had just jumped inside, so I wouldn't even go for that. Thank you, okay. sir. Okay, that's fine, Bernard. <laughs> We have Galaxy One. Is that Galaxy A eight zero two? Please, if you have your name, that would be nice. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, good morning, sir. So next time, change it to a name. Just give it a name, okay? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I, I, I'm going to set a focus down. So, uh, mm -hmm. the question six: Identify the odd mm -hmm. option. Mm -hmm. If if they put it into like uh, maybe the capital towns of these regions. Mm -hmm. At least mm -hmm. it will be better than identify the odd option. It's a bit confused. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Sir. So, okay. So, so that is how the examiner decides to test our understanding. It, it becomes easier for us to say, oh, which, what are the regional capitals or give the regional capitals of this? We can easily do it, you know, but. It is also testing your ability to apply knowledge. Okay, you know the regional capitals. Okay, now we are mixing it up with some district capitals. We are just mixing them up with some towns. Let's see whether you still know or you just memorize these things uh, for memorizing sake. Okay, so that's how the examiner chooses to examine you. You know, a lot of the times the questions come in a more of a, a problem solving way. Your ability to associate knowledge, your ability to disassociate, your ability to connect, establish relationships. So you can see that all the items are establishing relationships, but there's one that is the missing element within the relationship, which is really disturbing the relationship. And that item has to be disassociated or it should be taken from, away from the whole thing. Um, so Caleb, sir, please. Um, um, Bernard, okay. sir, please. I want to come in, sir. Yeah, sure. Coming quickly. So this number six is identifying mm -hmm. us to learn our spellings well. Yes, in a way because too. The, because the answer is, mm -hmm. which yeah. is not brekukum, it is birekum. Yes. 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 So, 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 so uh, in both ways, identifying us to learn our spellings very well, or. Very well. I agree with you. Because the examiner Thanks, could sir. just be at, could just be testing your ability to sure, um, sure. spell even Ghanaian names well. So so in so on both fronts, C is still the odd one. If you are even looking at it from the spelling angle, C is odd. If you are still looking at it as uh, towns, uh, regional capitals, it is still C, which is the odd one. Yeah. We have Kwamina and uh, Fidaios. Is have I pronounced your name well? It's Fidaios. The name is Fidaios. Fidaios, okay. Yeah. I I the one. Yes, please. Fidaios, yeah. Nana, but I'm one. Okay, yes, Fidaios, go ahead. Um, sir, please. I understand all that you have said, but I was mm. using B as the answer because. Looking at it, I wasn't looking at it from your perspective. I was seeing it that Nalurugu is in the north, mm -hmm. but all the other regions, <laughs> all the other things are like north in the north. south. Yes, so I chose Nalurugu based on the fact that Nalurugu is the only one in the north. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. but I, I don't so know how south is. I don't know how southing Dambai is. Okay. It, uh -huh. It's only like my, that's my, from my view. Your estimation, yeah. Me. So, so, so I really like the answer you've given or the, your, your submission. So it means that you must weigh your connections very well. Okay. So after weighing it, okay. It, it's a good thing to do when you are doing exams or uh, when you are solving problems, you have the first solution, or let's say plan A, then you have your plan B, then you have the plan C, and so on. So having looked at it as, okay, when I look at the items, it looks like there is a northern-southern divide. 
So that's my first um my my first thought, my first thinking of the problem. Now you have to also think about another problem again and say, okay, apart from the fact that these are northern uh, um, um these are southern towns, but one is a, a northern town, is there anything then you can begin to reconsider your position to see if there is a possible review or there's a possible um, way by which you can change your initial hypothesis if you like so you 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 let me use the word hypothesize it's like you guess so let me put that way you give a guess okay when i look at the items here i guess all are down all are southern towns except nalerigu that's your first guess but sometimes you need to think over your guess again okay having selected nalerigu Am I too sure that Dambai is a southern country? Uh, sorry, it's a southern town. Dambai is up on the OT, uh, a part of the OT region, not even down of OT. It's a bit up of the OT. Can I, on that basis, classify it as a southern town? Do I have to review my guess, my hypothesis? Uh, uh, as if it does, that, that's the that's the thing I want, that's the kind of attitude I want you to have. So you can have your first guess, test the guess critically and see if it really passes the test so well. If not, then you scale it down to another guess. Then you can even compare and see, or to see which guess is the best guess. Yeah. To the extent that Bernard gave us that if we want to check the spelling, Brikum is still wrong you know yeah. so so it's good so it's all about starting with a guess if you don't even have the knowledge you can guess or even if you have the knowledge because we are not asking direct question if i asked if the question was direct what is the um what is the capital of northeast what is the capital of uh, ot what is the capital of uh, hafo that's so categorical and you get the answer straight so this is that's what I, I I said. It's what is testing your ability to adapt with information. So you are given a whole bunch of information. What do you do with it? As a student or a learner, you don't just consume information, but you have to process information and make good use of it, turn it around, use it to solve issues or solve problems and so on. So I like the way you started with a guess, but sometimes you have to review your guess. Um, let me not hijack the whole thing. Let me bring in and that was oh, Kwame. That was, was yeah. it Kwame now? Yes, Kwame now before James and yeah. Kwame. Yeah. Thank you very much, Prof. Um, uh, it, Prof, it sounds a little tricky here. Yeah. Uh, uh, in that knowing that there is the possible, uh, there's a possibility of typos, especially yes. even when, when you are setting questions. Yes. I am now finding it a little difficult whether we are mm -hmm. looking for right spellings in this mm -hmm. particular uh, um, um, uh, uh, context question yeah. or mm -hmm. we are looking for geographical location because I think one of them must be what we are looking for mm -hmm. whether we are looking for regional capitals or spelling mistakes or right spellings of, of, of the towns I'm not sure right. but it sounds tricky right. for me yes that is what it is. It's tricky. And it's in the sense that the examiner is can have multiple objectives. Okay. He may I have his core I'm, objective. I'm, I'm, so, sorry, let me just add this one. Go ahead. Quickly. Which, which mm -hmm. therefore means that even spellings can be part mm -hmm. of the things the examiner is looking for. Absolutely. In fact, when you listen to my introduction and in my previous presentation, it's part of it. I think uh, for English language, we um, see under language use, there was something on spelling. And and um, I think there's a question that will come up. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but one of the questions is actually testing. It's just like the am and the am. So it's more testing your grammatical knowledge in that sense. But you could also have a question where the examiner wants to test severally. He wants to test your knowledge of regions at the same time, test your spelling. And sometimes, so that is one thing about being test wise. Sometimes the examiner finds a way of helping you solve the problem. 
Okay, you should be able to find a solution. So for instance, if I gave these items and you didn't even know, let's assume that you didn't even know uh, all of them. Let's say you knew about Dambai, you didn't know about Nalerigu, and you knew about Goso. Now your problem is going to be, now you can select Dambai as a correct form, so it's kept. You can select Goso, so it is kept. Now you are torn between Nalerigu and Brekum. Okay, now if you didn't even know that Nalerigu is a regional capital and you are not sure about Brikum. Now, you can even look at the spelling and say, even if I'm not sure, that's not how we spell Brikum. Okay, so oh. it means the examiner is even helping you to be so conclusive. So Brikum is wrong when it comes to the knowledge side in terms of the selection of the regional capital. And it is still wrong when it comes to spelling. So the examiner is is trying to be so emphatic and that should really make the whole response indisputable okay thank you uh, so some so so it, it means that you have to be a bit more critical check the spelling probably first check the knowledge and you know when you guess the options see if you can really put it put it to another test so that is more about aptitude test if this was not aptitude test and it was, let's say, social knowledge, just social knowledge, it would have been very simple. You know, in fact, the examiner would, would even provide the dash, the spaces and say, find the original capital of Northeast, find the original capital of Uti. Then you just put in your answer. But you have knowledge, then you have aptitude test. It's a combination. In fact, we cannot finish or do a paper and say, this is general knowledge. When you finish, go and do aptitude tests. We are testing your general knowledge, but we want to eat in a, an aptitude way. We, we, we are doing it with an aptitude objective. Aptitude meaning how prepared, how ready are you in terms of your ability to think critically, your ability to make associations, your ability to adapt to new knowledge, your ability to turn information and apply in situations and so on. So this is a very tricky one. I agree with you. And it is deliberate. It is to test a number of things. Thank you. So, James, are you there? Then Kwame yeah, yeah, yeah. and Albert. Yes. Yeah. So, let's, James, let's go quickly. James, then Kwame and uh, Albert come in. Yes, please. Um, for my, I just want to also uh, elaborate on uh, this. Uh, so, for my perspective, I don't think this thing is a, a complicated or very stroke because sometimes you have to look at uh, what the maximum is asking you. And when you look through the objective, you see that uh, all of them are regional capital except Brekum. So, there's no way you go and take Nalerugu as the old as uh, the old one here because the maximum is referring to the regional capital except Brekum. So, I don't think this is a, a, a confuse, you know, this can a, a confuse anybody. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Okay. The the confusion comes when the person didn't say the following. You see, I like what uh, James is bringing up. If the examiner has said, identify the odd regional capital, or let's say the following are regional, the question can be put in another way. The following are regional capitals, except, now that's a very easy thing to do. That is so undisputable. You will go straight, pa, 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 and find your answer. But this one, it says, identify the odd option. So that really calls for a more um, critical view. So this is testing more than knowledge. It's, it's pushing you further to really go beyond just what you know, but also an analyze it critically and be sure that what you know is what applies in this situation. Albert, uh, let, let Kwame Adam come in, then Albert will come. Kwame Adam, please. OK. So, um... I want to ask, uh, mm -hmm. can we have more than two answers in one question or more than one answer in one question? It, 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 it's, it's possible. You can have more than one answer uh, uh, in one question. In fact, there's a question that will show up as we move on. The similar one is down there, which will show up. And so there is, you can have more than one answer in a question. But the thing is that, just as the last um, speaker said, you need to look for the most of yours, the most pronounced. But say, um, please, mm -hmm. what if um, the Brekum was being spelled correctly and the mm -hmm. Nabai or the Nalilubu was spelled wrongly? Yes. 
I have now, so mm -hmm. so if it happened that way it could be that the examiner just want to test your ability to pronounce uh, you know spell these names well observe the crop the proper spelling of the the name so that can also be um a trick okay mm -hmm. so the examiner can do that even Dombai, he could change it to D O M B A I. That would be Dombai. And if you don't pay attention, you would have missed the O. Okay. Hmm. But in that case, he will not put Dombai and Brekum together because that will create more problems. Unless he wants you to identify, um, say, we are just talking about towns, towns that we know. One of them is unknown. So we can have Dombai, Nalerigu, Brekum is spelled well. And go also is also spelled well. Now, in that case, we are not looking for regions. We are just looking for towns, whether they are regional capitals or not. We are just looking for towns. And for the towns we are looking for, Dombai doesn't exist. Okay. You understand? So yeah. every test item has its own objective. It depends on what the examiner is trying to test. And the examiner also has the liberty to test more than one skill. So he can test your knowledge and can also test your ability to organize or maybe spell very well okay yeah um there was somebody before there was somebody albert yes albert so kwame you can put your hand down albert please come in okay I... albert albert you can unmute okay i've done that okay go ahead I Do you have a question? Like, uh, yes, yes. Uh, I can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Ah, uh, I want to know if the cumulative mark for the assignment is the same forty for the general paper as it is for other. Yes. Subjects. Yes. Yes. And if so, that so, if mm -hmm. the case, and I'm I'm a little concerned that we we not done any uh, we've not done and uh, uh submitted any assignment in the general paper yet uh, because okay. i've seen that the questions are more tricky than i thought yeah right now looking at all these things yeah uh, at first i was thinking that very easy just a little yeah I so it's all in your interest it's all in your interest so that we go through and you get to appreciate the general sense because the questions can be very tricky, troubling, and all that. Once you get a general sense, we can even do two assignments every week. We can even do three in a week, you know. So it's in your interest. We go through gradually. You appreciate the test and how it comes. Then when I ask, when the next time I put a, a, a task on the LMS becomes easy. And don't worry about the items. There are several question items and they are just objective there is no uh essay or subjective aspect it's just objective i can ask you to take a test any day tuesday for instance i can ask you to take a quick test and and over and you see the test can be instant it's not going to be an assignment submitted the next day no uh, I, my tests are not going to be usually based on submit unless I have given you some assignment, like I've asked you to do a list of items. Maybe one day I just want to inspect, be sure that you are actually doing some assignment. Then I can, you know, find a way of adding it to it. Okay, but I want it, I want the general paper to be as objective as possible so that you know before the examination, you know that you have 40 marks, you have 30 marks, you have 20 and you know how you have to struggle or the kind of effort you have to put into the examination in order to get at least your past mark. So, Albert, is it fine? Don't worry. You'll be fine. That exactly is what I want. I want to grab hold of all the 40. But I maybe mean, there is um, I don't have the luxury of time and all the materials that I have at home now. You'll so still get I your 40 marks. I, I know that maybe I have my 40. So, sir, please, sir, please. Okay, Bernard, quick one. Uh, please, when are we going to have an assignment on the e-learning platform? Because um, from the e-learning platform, I've only mm. observed that only English and mathematics that 
we can get associated associated with with uh, an assignment that we should do and then they will grade us on a plat platform but okay. apart from that i have never seen that of general paper in french okay because our dean said he will be grading us per our e-learning plat platforms which assignment we'll be doing but okay Man, it, of, it brings uh, us back to the same question that I'll all right, all right, all right, yeah. all right, all right, sir. We'll deal with all it. Right. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll, we'll all right. make sure you get Thank it. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Ket Shiloh or Shiloh. Ket, can we quickly go on the items? We have very little time left. So let's focus on the item. Maybe some of these general, if your question is a general question, it will come up. Even if it's related to this, there's a similar item that will come up. If you wouldn't mind, we can quickly run through when we get the another issue will pop up. But Kat, go ahead. Yes, it wasn't a question, but I was trying to address something. Um, if I'm right, okay. but I can't be corrected concerning assignments and all that. I think every teacher has his own way of going about with his lessons and stuff. So I think um the giving of assignments and everything, I think you are aware. So I would urge my colleagues to actually list those ones to you because you actually have no way of going about the students actually be comparing teachers and lecturers that this is this or this is okay. So okay. Um, okay, thank you so much. Um Aduma and Galaxy, if it's a piece of advice, <laughs> that's fine. Um Aduma? Uh, uh, okay, sir. No, Bernard. I haven't called you. Uh, I'm calling Adoma. Yes, she's been okay. Yeah, sir, if I'm permitted, I would like to yeah, talk go to ahead. my colleagues. No, no, a don't worry. If, okay. if, if he's talking to your colleague, let's let's it's okay. I think they, we've gotten it. Okay. okay, so sorry. Yeah, so that we, we can move on. Galaxy, is it the same issue? <laughs> let's move on. We, we have very little time left, so let's quickly go through. The, the issues will come up, they'll keep coming up. Then, maybe in the last um let's say the last 10 minutes of our class we will do a bit of tete -a -tete so we can really um you know put some piece of uh order if you like okay so let's move on uh aduma and ket is your old hand so you can still put them down let's go to seven we are doing 50 and we are now on seven so let's quickly uh, move up, 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 up. Okay, so complete the following sequence. Um, who is completing it for us? Um, do you have the answer? Of course, the answer is there. Oh uh, yes, sir. Um, can I talk? Yes, go ahead. All right. So this sequence is just like um, times two of the number minus one. Mm -hmm. Yes, so for instance, 24 times 2 is 50 minus 1, then you get 49. And then 49 mm -hmm. times 2 gives you 98 minus 1. Mm -hmm. Then 97 times 2 gives you 194 minus 1. So this also 193 times 2 will give you 386 minus 1. Okay. Okay, so that's one way by which you can go uh about one way you can handle it right yes please yes please that's yes. how i yes work yes work. it's a problem solving so uh it's a problem solving task so sometimes you have several ways even if it's mathematics there are several solutions so several ways of looking at it and he is saying that each number doubles itself minus one right so you have 25 times 25, or 25 doubling itself. So 25 plus 25, that gives 50 minus 1. Um, 49 uh, doubling itself will give you um, 98 minus 1. That gives you 97. And um, 97 doubling itself will give you 194 minus 1. Then in that case, we are going to double 193 and just deduct 1. 193 doubled itself will give you 186 minus 1. That gives you 385. That's fine. That's one solution. Another solution is to find the difference between 25 and 49. 
find the difference between 49 and, seven, and 97. Find the difference between um, 97 and 193. Now, the difference would, you, you, you would realize that the difference plus the previous number will give you 49. The difference plus the previous number will give you the next number. And when you do that calculation in that way, you will get, you'll still get 185. So maybe in the classroom, when we are illustrating this, I can show you the, uh, the, 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 the calculation, or we can just do it together in class. So that is one other solution. There could be several solutions to this single problem. Okay, so that's the right option. So let's have another, select the odd option out. This, this is similar to the Nalerigu Dambai stuff. Okay. Any anybody to explain this for us? Uh, Prof, can I come in, please? Yeah, come in. Uh, who, who is speaking when, now? When, is it Larry? Yes, yes, please, Larry. Okay, go ahead. Looking at all this, um, I think uh, we are talking about capital cities of countries. Mm -hmm. So Kabul seems to be. Wait, I think shouldn't the answer be Djibouti? That's question eight, eh? Uh -huh. I feel the answer should be Djibouti because mm -hmm. Djibouti is a country. Mm -hmm. All the others are capital cities. Okay. No, can I come in? Yeah, you can come in. Is it Kwamina? Kwamina here, yes, sir. Okay, come. Then Eric will come. Yeah. Yes, I I think uh, A is a town or a city in Africa. Mm -hmm. The B Freetown is also a city in Africa. Mm -hmm. Bangui is also a city in Africa. But Kabul is a city somewhere in Afghanistan or so. Okay. So I think okay. uh, they are all in Africa. Kabul must be outside Africa. Okay. Okay. I think Kabul is the capital of Afghanistan, right? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay. So you can see that they are all capitals. Okay. So in that case, you know, um, was it a um, forgotten the lady who brought the idea that there are north, northern, uh, southern cities or southern towns and not one northern town? Okay, so that guess can help us here. So all these are cities or regional, uh, national, uh, capital cities. They are all capital cities, all right. But three of them belong to a certain geographical setting. And one seems to be different from that geographical setting. And just as Kwame now said, three, the three are from Africa, and the last one is from um, Afghanistan is Asia, right? So, so that could be, or that is the easiest option for us, and we can go with it. Um, Eric, kindly come in quickly, then uh, Kat will come in. Eric, unmute and come in quickly. Yeah, I, I, I was going to answer the question, but I think you already explained and answered mm. it so we can move on. Yeah. That's beautiful. Kate, do you have a similar thing to say? No, please. Um, Let's move on. That is a country. Yes, it, has, it is an undisputable fact that Djibouti has its uh, capital town called Djibouti. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so that, that's that's very interesting. There are some countries whose capitals are still the names of the countries. So that's something that we, we should pay attention to. There are some countries where the capital city bears the same name as the name of the country. And Djibouti is an example. Yeah. So item three, identify the odd option, solar power, hydropower, wind power, nuclear power. Bernard, is your hand up? Okay. Uh, nuclear power. It's nuclear power. Yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. Yes, please. Bernard, go ahead. Yeah. The answer is nuclear. Nuclear power. Okay. 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 Yes. You're right. But there's a controversy to it. Some, some argue that uh, nuclear power is also renewable. There's some argument like All that. Right. But it's very right. clear that solar power, hydropower, wind power are uh, renewable sources of power. Nuclear power actually uses um, uranium, which is, sure. which is mined. 
uranium is actually mined from the earth and it is definite when i say definite it means that uh, we can get to a situation where all the uranium on on earth are finished and there is no more so uh, that is where the aspect of renewable comes in. So mm -hmm. if you, if you, uranium can get finished and we can renew the uranium, then we actually can't say it is renewable, even though there's an argument strongly in some circles to support nuclear power as renewable. But when you look so, at solar, the sun is always there. The sun is always there. The sun is not going to go anywhere. Hydro, there's no way water is going to get finished. You know, water is going to be there all the time. Of course, oh, the water can dry up, but the water will be there so long as it rains. Oh, then, yeah. so long as there is wind, we still have wind, which is renewable. So we see the best, the first three as, if you like, the best examples of renewable um, energy. But nuclear is not really renewable, even though some scientists want to argue that it is carbon friendly. It doesn't produce so much carbon, uh, uh, and so th th that's not really the argument. It's about the substance that is used to declare or to, to generate nuclear power. Um, Eric, Prof, can I also, uh, sorry, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, please. Can I also uh, look at it this way that mm -hmm. all the first three A, B, C mm -hmm. are God out of God, yeah. Renewable. <laughs> yes. And then the nuclear one is controlled by man or is, is touched by man, unlike the mm -hmm. previous ones. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. okay. It works. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, mm. I'm talking, eh? Bernard? Is it Bernard or Larry? Or Bernard? It's Larry. Okay, Larry, go ahead, please. Well, I was also looking at it from a different perspective completely, as in solar power generates electricity, uh, hydropower generates electricity, wind power generates electricity. I didn't even look at the electricity generation from the nuclear power. Nuclear, I, thought well, of, I thought of it as a destructive power. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I, so get I, it. Just, I get yes, it. I just got it. Yes. You're right. Nuclear power is an energy source for generating electricity. Yeah. Of course, you can still use nuclear technology to do all the other things, including health and so on. Our X-ray machines sometimes are we use nuclear, we 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 use nuclear energy to do all that. So it has okay. positive, a lot of positive uh, uh, uses. Yeah, learning. So about forget that. about uh, Iran and all the US and those uh, nuclear countries <laughs> and their their fight. <laughs> Sure, okay. I think I just yeah, one yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go to item 10. Um, item 10 is very common. We saw it in, uh, it came in one of our presentation, right? So 100 respondents took part in a survey. If the total number of men appear on a pie chart as right angle, how many women took part in the, st in the, in the study? So the right angle is like a quarter. It comes like this when you look at it at the bottom there where my kesa is that's the right angle so if the men who took part constitute the right angle it means that it constitute a quarter of the pie chart so so then we can have uh four quarters a quarter here another quarter here another quarter here another quarter here and so on so you're going to have a quarter here which constitute the part of men the rest will constitute women and so a quarter of 100 is 25, that's for men. The rest will be um, deducting 25 from 100, that gives 75. This is quite simple and straightforward. There are so many ways of arriving at this. You can just use the quarter calculation. You can also use the um, 90 over 360 times uh, 100 calculation and all that. We would... Um, Try it when we get to class. Okay. Then you have um I sold my pocket watch for one for, for 220 CDs and made a profit of 25%. How much profit did I make if the CD to dollar exchange rate is one is to five? Did we arrive at eleven dollars? Yes, I did. Okay. 
Yeah. So 25% of 220, that will give you the figure. Um, that will give you um, the figure of um, how much? 55. 55, 55. And so... You have 55 CDs. In dollar terms, if the exchange rate is 1 is to 5, it means every dollar will be worth 5 CDs. So if the exchange rate is 5, then it means we have 11 CDs, right? It's simple. It's straightforward. This one too, you can use all kinds of... I have a question. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Aku also the coming so quickly. Question 11. Mm -hmm. It says, mm -hmm. I sold my pocket watch for 220 Ghana cities and made a profit of 25%. Yeah. Now, 25%, mm -hmm. uh, how much profit did I make? Is the CD to uh, dollar rate is 1 point, uh, 1 is to 55. One is to five. Um, yeah. Uh, one is sorry. One is to five. Hmm. Okay, wait. I'll, I'll come back. I'll come. Back. I think I'm. Okay. Okay. I'll okay, okay, I'll come back. okay. Do I got the eleven dollars? But then. Okay. I'll... So so what it simply means is that I sold my watch. The money I got was two hundred and twenty. Now out of this two hundred and twenty, when I check, I realized that I had bought it less twenty five CDs. Uh, sorry, less 55. It means that the 55 series is what I go. Probably I bought it. I bought it. Um, so it, it, you can even remove the 55 from the 100 and, uh, 220. That will tell you the actual cost price. Okay. Then I made 55 out of it. So what I have in terms of what I have in my pocket is 55. The, the difference is what I used in the past to buy the watch. So what I have in my pocket now actually is uh, my profit, which is um, 55. So if the exchange rate is one is to five, then I got 11 CDs. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very simple and straightforward. You can use all kinds of calculations to arrive at this, but it's straightforward. Okay, now let's go to these two questions. Trouble questions. So it's a cube, right? A cube has four sides, six sides. Six, mm -hmm. six sides. Okay. Yeah, the answer is not here, right? Okay. So the sides are the faces, right? So you have the top and down. You have the left and right, you have the back and front, making six. So we can say six sides. Did you get it? So the answer is not there. Let me just yes, highlight it. We, we got it. Look, I think if some of us play Ludo, you should know that it ends with six. The game uh -huh. of <laughs> that's that's so perfect. Yeah, yeah we then, got six. We that's got so six. perfect. Okay. So, what about 13? Let's do it together. Um, a cube has Eight, eight, eight vertices, the, the corners. Yes, yes. Eight corners or vertices. In fact, the right name the is vertices. Is yes, not corners. Yeah. So, but vertices. Yeah, just perfect. Okay. Um, and a cube has the edges. How many edges? So we can wow. count. So the edges are where wow. the the lines where where two points um, where, emerge. Where, where, the faces, where the faces meet. Yes, where, where, where two, faces two faces meet. Yeah. Kind of. yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, that's right. And that's uh, and twelve. The of a wall, not the pointed part, but two walls meeting. Okay, so we have twelve edges. Okay, so this one, even if you find yourself, so so even if you don't know, just imagine as somebody mentioned the ludu, the dice you use the die <laughs> and just look at it and see oh, okay you can just find some some solution you don't always have to have this in your head you know you should be able to imagine something quickly 
and solve a problem. That's really what we are testing. So maybe the next time it will be a kite, the next time it will be a trapezium, the next time it will be, <laughs> I don't think it will have a trapezium, forget about trapezium. <laughs> okay, um, let's move on. A decade and a half is, or make how many years? A decade is 10 years, right? So if you have five decades, you have what, five, 50 years, a century is 100, so half a century is 50. So 50 plus 50 gives you what, 100. So a decade, Five decades and half a century make 100 years. Okay. Um, you're the only person I can trust with this secret. You are, you, you're the only person. This is another example of what we did in item one, where you have you are shortened, contracted form of you are is you. So it sounds the same as you, as in A. So if you're not careful, you will say, you choose A, you the only person I can trust with this degree. The same as you, the only person, you're the only person you, I can trust. So in terms of uh, of speech, okay, you may say it as in A or say it as in D, but in writing, you're actually referring to D. So sometimes because we, we speak quickly or in rapid speech, we contract what we say. And so we need to draw a distinction between what we say and what we can write. Then I'm not dashed to this kind of treatment. I'm not used to. A lot of the times, because we are in a hurry in our speech, we say, I'm not used to, used to. You don't get the D sound. Yeah, in rapid speech, it's it's, it's okay. I'm I'm not used to. It, it could glide. You could glide over, over that. But in writing, it is used to, it is the past tense used to, the past tense of use or the participial form used to. So just take note of that. Um, all the authors he, that's another example of um, homophones. So you have cited, cited, um, the, the C is an unknown word because there's nothing like cited. The past tense of sit is sat. So that should even help you to eliminate it. Then you have cited as in the past tense of sight, some kind of participle form of sight, as in seeing with the naked eyes or seeing with the eyes. Okay. Now they all sound alike, but they have different spelling and different meaning. You know. So here we are talking about citing an author, a meaning mentioning, mentioning. Now, the B, which is cited, is to find a location or locate a place. So cited as in S-I-T-E-D is more about a location, a site. Then, of course, cited is wrong. It's, it's, it's not English. Then you have cited, seen something with the naked eyes. So the best answer is, a, which is citing or a citation, making reference to. So all the authors he cited in this article can be described as metaphysical writers. So this is just a few words that are confusing, confusing and conflicting, can create problems for you. So just take notice that we have cited as in citing a, a, a source, as in citation, then we have cited as in locating a place, locating, identifying a, a geographical space or a, a space. Then we have cited, seeing the past tense of sight or seeing the, the past tense of the past participle form. Then you have, I have found, this is another interesting word that creates problems for us. Okay, I have found a sit for you. Please sit down. And let's talk. Or I have found a seat for you. Please sit now and let's talk. Now here they don't sound alike. Or, or, or if you like, there's a minimal difference between the sounds. There's a minimum. Is this this is not a typical example of a homophone? Okay, homophones they sound alike in every way. But in in this example, we call we call the example here minimal pairs. The, the, there is a minimal difference between between their pairs so we have sit and seat 
One is a short vowel and the other is a long vowel. But a lot of the times you hear people just mix, mixing them up. There's a difference between sit and seat. Another example is live and leave. Another example is pick and peak. Okay. So when you have these minimal pairs, they, they, of course, they have their distinctions and you have to look at the distinctions. And for this example in particular, you will say, I have found a seat, which is more like I have found a chair or I found a place where you can sit. So in this example, you have to use the long vowel phrase. I found a seat, not a sit. I have found a seat for you. Please sit down. It is not sit down. It is sit down, not sit down. It is sit down, not sit down. So let's be familiar with these and sometimes try and change, try to change the way we pronounce them in our uh, daily discourse. Then 20, you have, although I've been absent, I completed the assignment. I've, I have been absent. I have been absent. Um, it's because of the past. Otherwise, I have to be absent. I will complete what I've been the perfect thing, but, or I have been. Sometimes we mix up being and being. So I have been, not being. I have been, not being. Okay. So that example or item 20 is B. Let's look at 21. Complete the following sequence. Complete the following sequence. Anybody, did anybody try this for us? Uh, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. So the best answer is what? 23 and 95, making B, right? Yeah, I think you add the next number. Uh, wait, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you add the number that comes after the number that is written to it. For instance, uh, that is how I solved it, though. Two, okay. Three, three comes after two. So yeah. two plus three will give you five. Then six comes after five. So five plus okay. six will give mm -hmm. you 11. 12 comes after 11. So 11 plus 12, 23. Mm -hmm. Then this mm -hmm. one, 48 comes after 47. So 47 mm -hmm. plus the 48 should give you 95. Okay. Okay. So this is a mathematical problem. You can solve it in different ways. Somebody will also establish the difference between 2 and 5, the difference between 5 and 11. And you will see that the difference between 2 and 5 is 3. The difference between 5 and 11 is what? 6 then you see that the differences keep multiplying itself or keep adding itself. Let's say keep duplicating itself. So three to six and to 12 to 24 to 48. So you just be adding um, the difference to the, the root or to the previous number. And that will give you in the case of, um, in the case of 11, the difference is 12. So 12 plus 11 will give you 23. Um, another difference is 24. I think between 23 and 24 will give you, between 23 and 47 will give you 24. And if you add the 24 to the 78, sorry, to the 47, that should give you, um, no, so the next difference between, between 47 and the next, Okay, I think we can do it in the series. So uh, first of all, your, the answer you provided is right. And uh, we can also establish the differences. So we have two, um, between two and five, you have three. Between three and 11, we have six. So you notice that two, uh, uh, three is changing to six, six is changing to 12, 12 is changing to 24, and 24 is changing to 48. So if you add 48 to the 47, that should give you the 95. So you can use these different permutations to arrive at the same answer. Um, we have just a few minutes more. Let's quickly run through this. Um, silent is too quiet, as cold is too formal. That's the most um, obvious response. Did you all get that? Oh, okay. A dozen is 12, that's 23. 
Yes. A right angle triangle still has how many sides? Three sides. Okay. Then, if you say Ghana Institute of Journalism is over half a century old, this means the institute is over 50 years, half a century. A century is 100, half of it is 50, um, which is the odd in the set below. Twitter, Facebook, Android, Telegram is Android, it's obvious. Um, Atta is two times shorter than Ama, while AC is taller than Ama. This means that Ama is taller than AC, Ama is taller than Atta is taller than AC, Ama is shorter than Atta, AC is taller than Atta. So that's the best answer. It's more of a logical question. Um, whew, this item, okay, a reporter, this, no, there's something wrong. Okay, should be this is a report of what happened. So there's there's a is missing here. Let's put it right there immediately. This is a report of what happened to a class of 14 boys and 16 girls one morning. Reporter one. All the boys who were late were punished. This means 14 boys were punished, less than 14 boys were punished, more than 14 boys were punished, none of the 14 boys were punished. Okay. Here, the best answer is less than 14 boys were punished. Now, you would see the same construction. It's just the same sentence or the same construction. Now, what is changing here is that in reporter one, you have all the boys who were late were punished. There's no comma anywhere. In reporter two's account, you have all the boys, comma, who were late, comma, were punished. Okay. Now, the who were late with the comma is indicating what we call parenthetical information, additional information, which can easily be taken out. Okay. And when we take it out, um, let me do something right now. When we take it out, okay, when we take this parenthetical information out, we're going to have all the boys were punished. All the boys were punished. This means 14 boys were punished. So in the first example, because of the absence of the comma, less than 14 boys could have been punished. In the second example, because of the omission, which is the parenthetical expression, it means it's just adding information. We can take it off and there's no, not going to be any change to the construction. So we have all the boys were punished. All the boys. So it means all 14 boys were punished. That's for item 29. Uh, do you have questions Hello, on that? Yes, yeah. Yes, I think, uh, does that mean question mm -hmm. 28? Please, please scroll down. Um, yeah, sorry. Question 28. All the mm -hmm. boys who were late were punished. Uh, mm -hmm. So in this case, it's, it's trying to tell us that the total number of boys in the class is 14. Mm -hmm. And then uh, obviously, it means from 0 to 14 boys are likely to be punished. No. So um, yeah, item 0 28... to 14 likely, which means that less than 14. They, they obviously can't punish more than 14 boys if the total number of boys is 14. I'm trying to explain... Okay. The, answer like that is how i understand it to mean so Since so it will be so it will be zero is out because there's human they are human beings right they are human so, beings. so it should be one to thirteen okay one to thirteen yes. boys were punished okay and then could have, so number. so between could, that number yes so you see we are told that the total number of boys were 14 and mm -hmm. some boys were punished okay and it says all the all the boys who were late, okay? Now, it means that we can if, we can't even add one. It means we have to go beyond one. So between two and 13, because of the plural boys. Boys, okay. If so only one boy was punished, boys. yes. If only one boy was punished, the sentence could have been, would have been categorical. So the speaker or the reporter would have said, one boy was punished for coming late, okay? But so far as he uses the term, all the boys, all okay. the boys okay so, even all the boys even looking at it very closely grammatically it should be from three onwards because if two boys were punished then they will in in english grammatically we we'll have to say both boys were punished both okay. so in english you would use both for for two anything beyond two 
can come with all. It's okay. just like so the, you can say both are my like friends, each, each other, and they want another situation. Absolutely, absolutely. So okay. both, so you could say both boys were punished. Both boys who were late were punished. Both boys who were late were punished. That would be for two. Okay, but or the that boys, boy, the boys who were the, late, or the boy who was late were pun uh, was punished. That's one. The boy who was late was punished. Or both boys who were late were punished. Or if you want to be numerically emphatic, two boys who were late were punished. But beyond that, you would say all the boys. So let's say two, three, up to 13 could have been punished. It means that, now what the sentence actually means is that some of the boys were not late. Or one of the boys was not late and wasn't punished. But the punishment went solely for those who were late. That's what sentence one means. It means that we have 14 boys, but not all of them suffered punishment. Those who suffered punishment were only those who came late. That's the meaning of the first sentence. Now, in the second sentence, because of the parenthetical nature, the use of the commas, it means that all the boys were late and all the boys were punished. That is why we can even take out that piece of information, the parenthetical information. I mean, the parenthetical means the comma information. We can take away the entire comma information and the sentence will still mean the same. All the boys were punished. We are we are introducing right, who you. were late. Yes, we are introducing who were late as uh, additional information to let us know why they were punished. Otherwise, they were punished, all of them. Okay. I saw since, hand, uh, since, since since our time is almost up, mm, mm. Uh, I want to quickly suggest something. If yeah. someone has a particular question they have challenge with, they uh, yeah. instead of yeah. reading everything, they could just uh, mention the question mm. number and then we tackle okay. it together. For instance, I have challenge with thirty-five okay. and thirty-nine. Okay, so let's uh, complaint is the noun form. So use complaints. The primary colors. We I think we mentioned that in our previous class already. Um, versatile is right. Um, I'm not used to the idea. Used to is also we've done that already. Being, um, I drove past. Um, who's okay? Access the journalist was denied access. Remember the difference between access and access. Then, uh, cause a worthy cause. Then, um, west. Usually when we say it, it sounds like yes. a. Usually when we say it, it, it usually sounds like um, worse. This is the worst, but actually we are saying this is the worst. So that's um, so how can I should... Can I quickly say something, please? Yeah, quick. Go go ahead. When I when I checked the difference between the two words, worse and then worst, um, mm -hmm. from the explanation I got on mm -hmm. Google, mm -hmm. worse is used for when you are comparing two things, two kind things. of like a... Mm -hmm. Comparative and then the worst is the superlative. So yeah. uh, in this case, I think so. I chose B actually, but then I just want to see if that is how the question was set. In this case, yes. are we comparing more than two economy? No, so this is the Since country's saying... worst economic performance. It means we've had several economic performances, if you like. So but this several, is the no, worst not just several. Two. Yes. Okay. So if, okay. If, if I said this is this is the country's worst economic performance between last year and this year, then it would have been the first one where we are comparing last year's performance with this perform this year's performance. So if you had if the question, if the it has been if it had been framed like comparing last year and so if you say uh, the country's performance in 2023 is worse than 2022 or this worse than the performance in 2022 then it have been worse and not worse but once we are comparing it in perpetuity we don't even know so maybe there's no end probably between 1957 when we gain independence up to now this is the worst or maybe comparing the first um maybe the fourth republic from is it um uh, 1993 up to now then that is fine or if we are even comparing the same regime from let's say 
2016 up to now for the same government, we are still comparing more than one year. Or even if we are looking at the second term, it's still more than one year. Yeah, so there's no clear vision in terms of um, a specific era, but it's obvious that we are comparing more than two. Eric Kwafu. Um, yes, yes. I, I just wanted to point out the question. Yeah. The question particularly states two decades. It means we are comparing 20 years. So it's, it's even clearer in the question. You can get it from the question as well. Absolutely. absolutely. I like the, the that point where you are getting the answer right from the question itself. So sometimes some of the items within the question serve as a lead. So we shouldn't ignore them. Thank you so much for the reminder. I think um, the rest aren't that difficult, uh, except the reading stuff. But we are not going to have any reading in our uh in our exam so let's let it go um so we are done up to 45 so uh, please think... please prof, um uh -huh. please eh, let's uh -huh. not read but i just want to compare the answers i chose for the reading part so if you could okay. just scroll, scroll it through okay. 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 okay okay i chose c for uh, wait 46 you chose c let me see yeah i yeah, also chose yeah, c. you're right Okay. Then 47, I chose D. Oh, I got it wrong. Mm. Okay. 48, I chose A, that's correct. 49, mm. B, that is correct. 50, B, that's correct. So I, I think I got 47 wrong. Okay. okay Let me that's check your answer again and then I'll check yeah. it. I'll check it. Okay, C. All right. Thank you very okay. much. You're welcome. Uh, for the rest of us, I don't know if there's any question. Um, we'll meet um, face to face. Your next video will come on Tuesday. Or from Tuesday, you get your next video. That will be a shorter one than um, the previous one because the previous one, as I said, is team. It's about four or five disciplines put together. So that made it a bit long. But uh, for this week, our concentration is on Ghana, more of the political history, the geography of Ghana, the people and culture, the things about Ghana, the sports, entertainment, everything Ghana that we, we know our towns, our communities, our regional district capitals. We don't have to know everything, but at least regional capitals are a few and we have to make sure we know them. As for the district capitals, we, we, we will not know them all, but that's fine. Have a fair idea of what they are and so on. Um, Kosivi? Yes, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Please, we couldn't uh, answer some of the questions. Which uh, one, from please? 33 to, uh, let me say, 40, uh, 38. Yes. We are following by you scrolling as you said. Yes, yes, yes. So if you can. Or should I send on the platform? I can send it on the platform. Would that be fine? Okay, yes, please send. Yes, so I can send all these uh, onto yeah. our platform. I'll send all okay. the I'll send the this particular one with the answers and everything. Yes, we do yes, the platform. So I'll send yes. it. Right. Yes. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. we we will end here. Um next week, I will say by popular request, you want to have your first assignment. So next week, <laughs> uh, you're going to have your assignment next week. Um, that's the on the on the LMS. So you do your first test. At least having given yeah, you this test, yes, yes, having given you this test, I think you are prepared. It, it gives you a sense of how tricky is going to be. The very technical things that you have to pay attention to. At least this is a familiar uh, thing territory now, and I think you should be able to do well in the first in your first. Uh, exercise oh. this one is tryout but the first exercise will come in the course of the week maybe after the the tuesday video i'll put it out there so that you can respond to it um our time is up and i thank you so much for making time to be here I wish you all the best um Hello. i should i should encourage you Hello. general knowledge is so yeah go ahead go ahead i didn't get your your name but Please go ahead. Okay. So general knowledge is so broad. So I, I pray you you just make time for it. Just go online. This morning, I was just checking out the, a video on 
Ghana's independence. You know, somebody did, I think, it 11 minute video talking about the arrival of the first Europeans up to the time of independence. Just so I felt, it's an 11 minute short video. I, was just, I just, I just bump into it on 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 YouTube. So um, information is all available. All you need is to just make some time and be learning. What I've done is to give you the scope where to tailor your learning. So a bit of knowledge on Ghana. So how our independence struggle, how we even got here before independence. Okay. Now, for us to talk about independence meant that somebody at some point colonized us. But what happened during before the colonization? Where, who were we? How we settled here and so on? What happened during the colonial moment? Did the whites just come and jump onto us uh, uh, to colonize us? What happened? A few things, a few remarkable things. I mean, the landmarks up to the point of independence and having had independence, what have we been doing with our lives, our leadership approach? Has it been that smooth or we in the back, forth, back and forth between military and non and civilian and so on. So all these will constitute our history as Ghana, our political history, a few bit about important places and institutions, uh, heroes and characters who have also dominated our political scene, our entertainment scene, our sports scene. All these are just pieces of information that you need to know when you are asked, you can really exemplify your what you know. Um, my last um, question will be, uh, Apia Felicia, and when she finishes, we'll just bring everything to a close. Thank you, Apia Felicia. Okay, okay. good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, please, I want to know if there is any science where we can get um past questions. I'm only asking this because way back in the amount of past questions, so I just mm -hmm. wanted to find out. Okay, if there's anything possible like that. Um. When you go online, you will find aptitude test questions, but the challenge is that most aptitude test questions are tailored in to fit certain contexts. So, for example, you get aptitude test questions for India, for different contexts. Okay, there will be there will be a lot of Ghanaian questions. You see that in our questions, some of them are Ghanaian related questions. So, but any site is okay. It's just learning, but that is why I gave you the scope. The most important is to have the scope. Once you know the scope, it means you know these are areas where you have to study. So all the things I've taken you through, I've given you the scope, the topics. So for science, for instance, the organs of the body, you can just type organs of the body and you get several sites where you can find organs of the body. The challenge with general knowledge is that there isn't one big book which has all the general knowledge. And if we even have that book, I doubt if we can carry it to class. So it means for every aspect, we may have to tend to a source. We may have to go to a source. And sometimes the sources may be too, may be very deep and narrow. And we don't need that. For instance, in talking about the history of Ghana, we don't need the history telling us when the date, when the British arrived, the date of the, you know, those are details. But at least we should know that the first Europeans arrived on this day. That one is a popular landmark. That's the first and we should know when we gain independence. That's the end of, so from, let's say, how colonization gradually started to when colonization in our part of the world ended. At least some landmarks, some key dates are, are important. Otherwise, the rest are not so important. For instance, the day, the date of the Sagranti War, for instance, uh, to be too much asking for, because this is not a history class. We just want to know what you know generally. So at this stage, every source is key. You can even go to the senior high school history book. You will find some sources. There are some topics or there are some dates that will be indisputable. There will be some disputes as to some concepts, whether Nkrumah is the founder or uh, the, we are founders. Those are practical issues, but at least we can know when Ghana gained independence, who became the first president. Those are key general things that we would know. Felicia, I hope you're okay. Yes, please. I'm very okay. Thank you. Yeah. So if, at, at this time, you don't have any a big challenge. Online is a big friend. Yes. And, and it works well because even when you are at your free time 
or you are working and you have a little, uh, just some little time to spare, you can just put your your thing on YouTube and be listening while you're working. At least something will sink. Yeah. Okay, so on that note, we say a big thank you for making time. We've, we've actually added into uh, taking about 10 minutes of your time, but we say a big thank you for making time to be here. Um, I wish you all the best for the coming week or the week starting this, starting today. And keep doing your best, keep reading, taking notes and, and paying attention to the things around you. Thank you so much. And thank you. Sir. Bye for now. Thank you very yeah. much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know if uh, thank you. Yeah, so Prof is around. So thank you so much. Okay, so um, from Monday we are going to have our usual self tutorial. So it's from five to six. Lecturers will not be uh, doing a Zoom like this. So you have to make time within that hour to do your studies as Prof. Dankwa said. Take your notes, read, take your notes, etc. If you have questions, you can email your, uh, uh, your facilitators, but make sure it's not in odd hours. Don't call them during the odd hours. Or you can put those questions together so that next week, Saturday, when we meet in person, you can uh, put it across and they will help you. So on this note, I want to say thank you so, so very much. And we are expecting all the 150 or so of you to enter Unimac. Um, someone just posted something. Let me see. Um, message sent before meeting. Then the class will be interesting. Message, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay. So on this note, I want to say thank you so, so very much. And we will get the link and the password shared with you uh, from Monday. Thank you. Uncle Patrick, I think you are now in a position to uh, end the meeting. Hey, why am I not doom spy night? Yes, yes. I want to ask you. Yes. Okay. Um, you posted something on our WhatsApp platform. You said we should form 15 uh, ways of synonyms and antonyms. And I was asking, is it a sentence so that we can identify the synonyms Hello? and the antonyms? Okay. Were, were you in the English class? No, no, no. You weren't. Okay, that's it. I think this question came up. Um, Kwame, uh, uh, is it Kojo? Kojo? Kosrev? Are you here? Yeah, 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 I'm here. Okay, kindly pick up that answer. What, were you in the Kwame. class? So, Bobby, no, please I... call me. Eh? I'll update you. Okay. Oh, oh, no, you say it because he might not be the only one. Having okay, the teacher course. actually asked her to provide 15 words with their synonym and their antonym. So, no sentences. No sentences. Okay, him. We sent it to him, to her on her email. Okay, so please, I, I want to know whether 15 uh, synonyms and 15 antonyms. You have the or... words. You have 15 words. It's synonym. Yeah, for yeah. yeah. Only... For example, I take one word. I get its synonym. Then I get the antonym. For ah, example, for let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Okay. For example, I take like adult. Uh -huh. That's the word. Uh -huh. Old person. That's the synonym. The antonym is a child. Oh, okay, 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 okay. You get okay, it? Anna, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so you list that for all the 15 words. Okay. Sir. Okay. Thank you very so, much. So, Pastor, uh, uh, today you have exerted your authority. That's what they want to see. They want to see Pastor uh, always um, talking on their behalf. 
Okay. Um, so, first rep, I've made you um, an admin, same as uh, our sister. Okay. So you are going to be the gatekeepers. So, for all colleagues, um, uh, if, if you have an issue, you have a concern, send it to the course reps. But please, I'm begging you, here again, not odd hours, between five and six. They will be available for your WhatsApp messages, etc. But um, not uh, 12 midnight. Eh? I hear some of you are sending messages to uh, some of my team members as late as uh, eleven fifty and the rest. So let's manage it. You know, some of our spouses are uh, as jealous as you are when it comes to your loved ones. So let's manage uh, those things well. On this note, Patrick, kindly, um, hey, then Bernard, who's what I don't say? Okay, on mute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> Doc. Uh -huh. Quick, be, be Doc, fast, please, eh? please. Um, I want to know if, like, those uh, exercises that they have been given to us, no, will it be added to our marks or what? Because me, me, I'm really com com confused uh, because it is only two Bernard, subjects that are you we are getting. Okay, yes, about please, it. yes, please, I am. Okay. Have you yeah. read the notice? Spoken about Be Bernard this. doesn't check on the platform. Neither does he read. Because he wouldn't have come to ask this question again. Uh -huh. Oh, 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 hold yes, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Madam, 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 madam. Bernard, it is clearly no. stated there. And in fact, I've right, indicated that 100% is 40% uh, continuous uh, assessment and then plus 60% exam. So please make sure you do the assignments. No, uh, sir. I am only asking of the one that is not pre pre presentable on the platform. That That is my worry. Which ones are not presentable on then the I'm platform? Confused, the is it the up, English assignment? Up to two tests, no, no, sir, please. No, up, up to two tests, we've never had an assignment on e-learning platform that we should ah, Gentlemen, gentlemen, hold on. Uh, hold on, gentlemen. How many um, times do you want this to be said? Hello, madam. Oh. Madam, calm down. Uh, he's he's speaking to me, gentlemen. I yes, don't sir. know whether you don't understand the English or not. All right. I was here when you mm -hmm. you complained about that yeah, to your hard on course rep. Oh, okay, and yeah, that's yeah, your yeah. Professor, and he yeah. gave a submission. All right. So what's the big deal? Huh? Hey, it was like some of you want to show. <laughs> huh? You have asked this over and over, and you have been. Asked to uh, are you the one going to teach us? No, sir, please. No, 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 no. So why? Bernard, it's nice hearing your voice. I could see you wanted us to hear you. Why? That you are still why? part of us. Thank you eh? for hearing your voice. Please. You see, no, no. um uh, the, the facilitators might not be excited by some of your postures. That's why you see me complaining. Yeah, yeah have you realized I'm not the facilitator? But you see me complaining about some of them behind the scene. Actually, I'm not too enthused about some of your utterances. Colleagues, these are professors. Yeah. These are doctors. Yeah. Please. Some of them are, can't even give birth to me. Eh? Some of the professors mm -hmm. who are teaching have taught me. They can give birth to me. And I respect them for that. I call them daddy, some of them auntie. And they're, I'm sure you've heard the way I, Auntie Rakia, uh, 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 Auntie Benedicta. Uh, please, you just made this. It's as if you're accusing the facilitator that he's not on top of his way. Come on. Do you know, the, do you know that David is an English teacher? <laughs> He speaks English so well. In fact, he is a language person. 
And I respect him for that. So please, I, I don't want to hear this from you again. Because if you don't change this attitude, this is what you come into the university with. And unfortunately, there are some of my colleague lecturers who are not tolerate. So please, yeah. it's not just talking, but make ask yourself what I'm saying. It's just three letter words, but what would be the implication? All that you want to tell me is that the facilitators are not doing their work. You know what, uh, what goes into producing a 15 minutes uh, video? Yeah. Hi. One of them was in the studio for four hours. Four solid hours to just produce that uh, uh, video to be uploaded. So please, let's have patience. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, Patrick. Doctor. Engineer doctor, Patrick. Something, please? Yes. All okay. Right, doctor, thank, thank you very much for the opportunity. I just want to quickly say something. Um, mm -hmm. You know, growing up when we were in school, some of us never asked questions that bothered us because we mm -hmm. felt we were going to get chastised by other colleagues who apparently understood what the teacher yeah. said. Just yeah. as Bernard started talking and then Adoma and some other lady started. So, uh, so, so, so um, please uh, talk to uh, them. Gentlemen, they should. Gentlemen, yes, you saw, I'm sure you heard me telling them Ajublao, Ajublao. Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, because I just, Bernard want, I just had want to raise this. this. Hold on. Okay. okay. Bernard had raised this, I think, to my private mail. Okay. Okay. And I'm sure he had raised this with the uh, course firm. Okay. And explanation was given to him. And right here, today, he raised it. Or didn't you hear him raising it? Please, I did. To the lecturer. Yes, I did. So why raise it again? Yes, I, un I understand, Professor. So uh, Bernard is, is not the type. Hold on, Bernard is not the type who probably is a shy type. He's an introvert. He just wants us to hear his voice because he has made those remarks on several uh, platforms to the extent that I have even indicated that it will be worked on. And then, I, I'm the shy type. Me, I'm very shy. Doug, please, I'm sorry. <laughs> Doug, 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 Doug. Doug, please, I'm sorry. So Doug, when please. The I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please. Quickly, I said, I do bro, I do bro, I do bro, I do bro. Be assertive. You know, gentlemen, there is a difference between being assertive with words and being aggressive with words. I won't tolerate aggressiveness. But then I will uh -huh. tolerate assertiveness. Okay, so the ladies yeah, yeah. were trying to shut him down. And I told the ladies that I do blow, I do blow. I want to believe that you heard me telling them I do blow, I do blow. Oh, yes, yes, Prof. I, so I, 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 I had been. No, I'm, is, I'm only saying, I'm only saying don't that. Add, don't let's add, let's, please, let's speak to mine. You are not, you are not, not the not course right. Please, I'm not Don't add to mine. So <laughs> I have dealt with the ladies. Don't uh -huh, come okay. and throw petrol <laughs> uh, uh, into kerosene. Thank you. Uh, they've, they've, I'm sure they've, they know themselves. And that's why she said, uh, you want us to hear your voice. Uh, so I have quietened the situation. And then you are coming to throw petrol into uh, kerosene. I then. Doc, on this I note, can, yes, a, can I have a quick <laughs> suggestion, Doc? Hey, mo, mo wo wo fie. Because you so are if the ladies don't sure have come a response, to this, I just want to have a, 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 a small eye of mine watching the way you manage your children in the house. Hey, so colleagues, but it's it's a good relationship, and I believe that uh, we are going to pick some norms, things that we do in the university, cultures that you have to. Uh, appreciate when you enter the university community. I'm, I'm sure we are little by little, we will treat you so that by the time you enter level 100 or diploma one, whichever it is, um, 
you will not have that culture shock. You will be able to appreciate. <laughs> because look, colleagues, if you are not very careful, eh, you are going to have your, your, your someone whom your first son is older than standing in front of you and teaching you. And you need to be able to handle that. Okay, I recall 2007. Uh, in fact, David and I, when we came to teach, some people saw us as uh, more or less their first sons. Mm -hmm. I recall one day, one of my um, let the top up top up student was asking me to put her bag on her seat because I was I was entering the class and she didn't know that I was the lecturer so she came to pack her car and then because she wanted to take something she said oh eh, 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 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and i quietly collected it and placed it on the front seat so i went and sat and what i also did was not to sit on where the lecturer sits i sat in one of the chairs and when the class was full and our students say and said, um, good morning, uh, my name is Stanley Semaku. After the class, she said she wished she had a hole under her chair. She would have just dropped into that hole. So you see, some, there, usually there are certain things we take for granted, but then I'm sure if it were to be another lecturer, the way the lecturer would have reacted would have been different from the way I reacted. Yes, she she became my very good friend. And in fact, she is my mother's age. I'm sure by now she's 77 because she was then a retired person coming to level 300, okay? She's my mother's age, very, you know, old. Master. So, so not Master. everybody will think that. So colleagues, on this note, I want to say thank you very much and have a wonderful, steady, self steady session right? on Monday to. Thank you, Doc. I mean, we are much appreciated. Face to face on Saturday and Sunday. Bye bye. Bye bye.